Well, I did complete all the videos for this part two, and then I had a Windows update and lost all the files. So, me showing you how I did things has all gone. So what I'll have to do is explain what I have done. Okay, we have the elevator here, which is um, a trailing edge. I put a horn onto there. You need to leave a gap of 60 mil to allow for this clevis here to travel. Okay, and this comes through and I've made an allowance for the rudder there. Now this, um, <laughs> I'm losing the will to speak English. Uh, this tube here for the snake, I have my measuring tool with me and that is in centimetres, 27 and a half centimetres, so 275 mil long. Place the servo here. And again, I'm leaving a gap here of 30 mil for that travel there on that servo. Now what you do is you use your sino, put the snake into there, let it go off and make sure you leave enough travel on the clip here. Okay. And then that will allow it to be adjustable. I also did the rudder. Now, some people use sellotape. I, I think you need something a bit stronger than that. Now, I cut a flange either side, put some nylon hinges in there. It's just normal sort of plastic, really, stiff plastic. Glued them in place. Put the horn on. The same as I did before, allowing for enough travel there for that to move. The length of that is 25 and a half centimetres, 250 mil. And again, allowing enough travel for this snake to go in here. And when you're putting your clevis on, make sure you're leaving enough uh, clearance for adjustments there. So that's the rudder side. The elevator side okay I have put a carbon rod in here this is uh, a 5 mil tubular rod the full length or almost the full length of the fuselage that is solid you that's not going to break now the reason that I've done that is as sure as apples grow on trees you're going to crash this at some point and it will break here okay also you'll get some people who want to put a servo in here for reasons best known to themselves you will severely weaken this joint because you're making this do something it's not designed to do so you have to put this in you've got no choice you might get a couple of flights out of it but you won't get much more out of it because this will break here Plus, when it's in flight, this will flex, it'll move, it'll do all this, and you won't get the control out of it that you need. You need to put this rod in, okay? Now, then, I have dug out the inside here. There's the receiver. It doesn't matter if you go into here at all, because if you decide at some later date to put ailerons on your wings, the cables are going to travel through here, through the leading edge of the wing, which will come out here anyway, and they go straight into your receiver. I've reinforced the inside of the cockpit with two lollipop sticks, because if you get a nose on, this will break off, because you're not protected by this. Okay? And then I've put some magnets here and here and here. Uh, it's a bit messy, I do apologise, and that then put the opposite on, on top of the, um, into the canopy, and that will click everything on. You put your receiver in, you put your battery in. So, this is now good enough 
and sloping and all you've got to do is pop your wing in like so apply your battery your center of gravity is one third of this which comes to 53 millimeters 53 millimeters from this leading edge to here that's approximately uh, 53 millimeters mark it balance it and that is your starting point I'm not saying that is the absolute center of gravity that is your starting point you'd be good enough to trim it out and in just a moment I will show you this working that's ready for slope soaring as it is right now okay okay now we're ready to try out the control surfaces uh, you've got your up and your down there which has got a lot of movement on there you might want to adjust your rates on that then we've got the rudder plenty of movement on there I don't think you need to touch that with the rates or anything okay then you just need to pop your canopy on check your center of gravity and give it a throw now I'll just turn this off just for a second I think well at the moment it's too windy for flying a glider we have no major hills or anything where I'm living at the moment um, I'd have to travel all the way down to Worcester and go to the Malvern Hills and I'm just not prepared to make that kind of a trip um, so that's how you're going to get yourself a glider you will only really be able to use it as a slope sawer it's not really a glider as such it's a slope sawer and so now you have your rudder control and your elevator control now if you want to take it a step further this is what you do now this is what I prepared earlier this is powered by a 200 2200 kV motor I've shown you in part one where to get all these bits from cut off the nose to a point I would say one centimeter or ten millimeters from this edge here make yourself a plywood firewall to mount the motor onto drill a hole through there which comes through here that then goes through your ESC this is a 30 amp ESC and then this thing goes into the battery you're going to need ailerons I highly recommend you make these into an aileron control rather than a rudder control you're going to get so much more control you're going to have so much more fun with this especially if you're using it as a slope sawer now I've put in these 9 gram servos into the wing and from the center of the fuzz it's 16 centimeters from the center to the arm from the leading edge it's 225 millimeters so two and a half centimeters from the leading edge cut them in there so two and a half centimeters from there and where the servo arm goes it's 16 centimeters you then cut out uh, your ailer cut just using your knife just cut don't take anything out just just cut into it there your cable will come through there it'll come through to the front of the leading edge comes out here and into your receiver and you just use a Y lead to connect both of these servos together use a straight rod with a clevis to your control horn which I would suggest you put into the middle of the aileron and that will give you complete control this particular one I, I don't normally use the rudder so I haven't bothered with it otherwise it's exactly the same as the other one 
to take out the dihedral some people will cut a line here you don't need to cut that line all you need to do is get yourself some kitchen towel get it wet on the bottom get it wet on the top and use an iron just a normal household iron warm up this part here and then physically bend it it won't break don't worry it's quite strong just physically bend it and heat it and bend it heat it and bend it it takes quite a long time until you get it flat then leave some books on top of it yeah and leave it and it'll it'll stay straight like this and that's how you get that dihedral out which then allows you to give a full length for the aileron which is what i've done this makes it highly aerobatic i do not recommend strongly recommend that you do not fly this under 100 percent rates i've got this on 50 percent rates right now that is more than enough and i'm an experienced flyer you don't want to use any more than 50 percent rates for these ailerons you can use 100 percent rates for your elevator no problem at all but if you do use 100 percent rates on here and you're not an experienced flyer this will crash I guarantee it become uncontrollable. So then all you have to do then is put your radio in, put your canopy on. Now to finish off you need to put a carbon rod almost the full length of the wing making sure you're going past the dihedral joint here to keep that dihedral straight okay you're putting a lot of stress on this wing this will take care of all that stress same size as this it's a five mil tube and that will get you a fully aerobatic slope sawer and if you want to put the motor on it'll give you a fully aerobatic uh, air aircraft for eight pounds obviously your motor here i think they're about 15 quid the SC kit here that's 12 quid this I bought uh, the receiver I bought is 25 pounds you can buy a pack of servos you get about six or eight servos 12 pounds and then plus your radio um, I have lots of fun with this I have lots of different models in my workshop I have World War One, SE5A, SE Camels, Messerschmitts. I love this. This is great. And if I if I break it, it's cost me eight quid. I'm sorry that I lost all my videos to show you how to do this, but obviously I can't go through the whole process all over again. The last thing I would say is when you come to choose your propeller, this one's a three by six. Now you need to get an E. It's got to have an E in front of it, 3x6. Yeah, it's a 3x4.5. I do apologise. It's a 3x4.5. If you go any higher than that, what you're going to be doing is you'll be you'll be moving so much air that this ESC won't cope with it. That'll start to burn, your battery will start to burn, and this will freeze up in mid-air and you're going to lose your model. So don't go any higher than a 4.5 um, pitch on that. Okay, so I found through trial and error, a 3, a 3 by 4.5 is about as high as you can go. I wouldn't go any higher than that. Um, you have to have a different size ESC and a different size motor and to put a different size prop on. Then you're starting to add weight. It's not that you can't do it, you can do it, but it's is it worth it? I think this runs great. It does absolutely what it says on the tin. And it's a superb model. And if you're trying to uh, break into radio control modeling, this is actually a very good way to start. And you know what? I think it looks kind of cool. It does look cool, especially if you get the canopy the right way around. Yeah, and they're easy to fix. Eight quid, little. Thumbs up.